What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and welcome to my thoughts on Outriders after playing this new demo that just came out. This is a game by People Can Fly, and technically it is their first title from this team since they left Epic. I wanted to jump into it. It's an online looter shooter that does require an internet service, and then you can sort of decide if you consider this a service game, because it does require one to actually play it, which is the internet. However, it doesn't look like they will have microtransactions in their future, so that'll be up to you to decide exactly what this is. For me, it's a looter shooter that I was interested in checking out, so let's do it. If you like the video, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, subscribe. Let's begin. Outriders pretty much starts out with the origin story for any superhero. You get struck by lightning and somehow get superpowers. We'll talk about those in a second, though. The original start of the story is a space arc. You've destroyed the planet with your meddling or possibly super weapons. No one exactly knows. And so space arcs have been sent out from the Earth and you found the planet Enoch. And it's your job, as well as a couple other outriders, to land on the planet and figure out a nice, safe landing spot for the rest of humanity. And of course, just like you'd expect, apparently all the maps on Enoch just point south, because that's how your luck goes. <laughs> Pretty much right at the starting, some dude gets questionable gunk in their mouth, almost dies, and you end up getting attacked, well, by the planet itself in a storm. And that storm, when it electrifies you, gives you powers that are connected to various classes you get to choose as the game continues on. Now, those classes are your techno Answer. This is a long-range character that uses gadgets for support, basically taking the debris of the planet around to make weapons. Then you have the Pyromancer, medium range, and a conjurer of fire. He was my favorite. I dig anyone who's going to carry a shotgun into battle, then use a hairspray can and a match to kill the enemies anyway. You also have the Trickster. They're a close-range hit-and-run using character that uses space-time, which is just another fancy word for stealth and stabbing people in the back. And then you have the Devastator, the aptly named tank, who does exactly what you would assume, which is getting up close to somebody, ignoring all damage done to them, and tries to kill the other person more quickly. And that's going to matter because you jump into combat pretty quickly. Now, each class has their own powers as well as skill lists, though a lot of the skill list is replete with a big number of that ho-hum 10% to a skill kind of upgrade. So be prepared for that. It can look pretty daunting, but once you actually start looking at those, they're not really that fancy at all. Now, a third-person shooter like this has to nail it, and I think this does. It has a bit of Gears of War with its use of cover and the ability to highlight another part of the world and sprint to it, and a little bit of Division with the third-person more sprightly and gadget and power-based gameplay. Those meld together incredibly well. Main quests carry you through the story, and there's a number of side quests that are here as well. I also like that when you're playing the demo, you notice that the main quest and the side quests also had different parts that snuck into one another. There was a main quest section that I was going through in town, and the town actually had a mini side quest right there within the town itself. It didn't feel like you had to go somewhere to always experience that. And that is a big step up from, let's say, a lot of the locations in most of these other games as well as you would, well, have to point out the big one, which is Anthem and its terrible city design. Regardless of what you take on, you go out into the game world and you start taking out enemies. And you can choose a different tier or world tier, which is basically just difficulty. It's not a huge difference when it comes to one to two, but as you start adding in world tiers and going up in levels, it can make a pretty big difference and you get better rewards for doing those things. What helps here also is regardless of the world tier, the control was pretty well spot on. You, of course, could go in there and rebind keys and all that kind of stuff. I did have a bug where suddenly a couple of my keys just weren't actually in the game, including the ability to switch to the secondary weapon. It just dekeyed itself out of the blue. But once I figured that out and got in, the controller gameplay was a little bit finicky, but it still pretty much worked. You'll see some footage here. And that's good because you're going out there and you're engaging different enemies and they do very cool things like the AI actually flanks you. They throw grenades to really get get you out of spots. It's nice. What's not nice, or somebody wasn't nice to them, is the level design. These are bland. They are just straight up artificial. This might be due to years of playing Destiny and Division and seeing those organic world spaces, but here, there's just walls right in the middle of paths, and even deserted buildings aren't actually deserted as much as cored out so that two sides can fight back and forth with equal locations to hide. You'll notice it instantly. Every single place feels like a placeholder. It does not feel like an actual world world you would go out and explore at all. Not all games handle this very well, but Outriders handles this first location at least 
terribly. And another thing that's terrible, honestly, guys, is the performance on the PC and i7 and a 2080 Ti. The game was not close to handling 4K with some of the settings even down to high and medium. Unfortunately, it block places a lot of the settings into overall categories, which doesn't allow you to go in and sort of minimax the way you might want to. 1440 was doable and at 60 most of the time. However, the cutscenes seem to have some peculiar issue. A lot of them seem to lock at 30. In fact, I think most of them do. Also, this game makes District 9 shaky cam look like it was filmed with the world's best static camera. Everything shakes in the game. There are scenes where the characters are at a table or at a bar and it zooms in and it shakes consistently like the camera person is just constantly suffering from the nerve wracking effects of war far more than the characters who have experienced it have. But shaky cam and shaky performance aside, what does the game feel when it comes to its cycle of going out and doing battle and coming back? It's actually not that bad. You can do single player and up to four players total as a co-op. You get new items, compare them to the old ones with the ability to craft coming in the later game, but not available for this starting demo. And while I really would have liked to have seen crafting, one place that the game also lets us down a bit is the sound design. Weapons have a pretty good punch, especially effects-wise, where enemies can push you out from behind cover with shotgun blasts. There are a lot of cartoony sounding audio for some of the guns, which is weird as a couple of these t guns themselves look like nail punchers, and instead it sounds like somebody's just yelling bang, 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 inside of an empty Folgers can. The best part so far, though, of Outriders, I gotta say, if you ignore that level design and you just sit back and you shoot some dudes in the face it's not that bad it's got a couple cool boss encounters that are available to you and as you better and better and you unlock the world tiers you can turn the difficulty up first second and third tier didn't seem to be a big difference one to third seemed to be a little bit of one the difference was that the enemies were noticeably spongier now the Pyromancer was my favorite, as I said before. You have the ability to interrupt enemies while they're casting their special skills and add levels of my own special damage to them, and that combo with all the others, as do all the other classes. Everybody has a series of basically the ability to interrupt and the ability to get interrupted from the enemy. Enemies will end up building up a resistance that has to cool down to your special move, which is weird because guess what? You don't get that. And it felt very odd, especially because a lot of these characters are supposedly the same kind of altered character like you are. It felt pretty artificial, but it'll be interesting to see how this all parses out. And because while it's fun, the somewhat truncated power base, the fairly boring skills and the levels are making me a bit worried. Of course, newer locations are going to help for this a great deal, and I'm excited to see where that goes. Another thing, the character creator for a game like this, I think has to be up to snuff and this one isn't. No way, shape, or form. This is an abysmal character creator. It's just a couple choices from a few heads and skin tones. It's basically mostly a mobile game kind of character creator and not that mayhem that you would expect in a multiplayer game when a lot of people are going to be seeing each other's faces and armors. You can turn the helmet off and on, of course, but I would like to have seen far more variation there. Now, in games like this where the core is the return of the audience to play again and again, I don't think the demo is selling the game as well as it probably could. And since it's missing some things like any in-game chat that doesn't seem like it's going to be there day one, that's missing a core component of the shooting game itself. And I think it's going to be really the jury out there to decide if that's going to be acceptable. Also, technically, while the game did not run incredibly well, it overall looked good. I like the designs of the characters. I love the designs of the enemies, especially the ones that you talk to and interact with. Some of those guys are awesome. They just have this feeling of menace and power around. I'm not going to say who, but there's one or two characters in here where you're like, damn, son, that guy guy is going to be so cool. And that is something that never once happened in Destiny, unless I, you know, pretty much understood who the voice actor was. And I liked him because of that. That is a cool step forward here. I think also one of the things you get is a lot of people who are like, hey, man, I've only played an hour of this, but it's already what I wanted from Destiny. And then you go and check and they've got 500 hours in Destiny. And you're like, frankly, if you played 500 hours in a game you didn't like, should you be trusted on a game like this? I don't know. And I'm not telling you you should even trust me. I am just saying that there are some issues with this game that I think when it comes to the longevity may hurt it. There's also some stuff here that is quite surprising and I am intrigued about. And that includes the story, the fiction overall. I actually like the classes and how they work together so far. Single player seems doable. You have a ton of different tier rates and I like the enemy AI as a whole. It's not necessarily going to go out there and solve any random equations that haven't been figured out in the last hundred years. But I'm glad we got to see a demo. I want to see it continue, but I would like to see some of these features, including in-game chat and a much better character creator, be put in here prior to the game getting released. And 
yeah, I just don't see that happening. So if you played the game, I'd like to know what you think of the demo, and especially if you played the demo for a couple hours, because I think that first hour could give you a bad feeling or a good feeling regardless. But as I continued to play, I certainly found that my opinion changed back and forth until finally it solidified here with a sort of a tentative interested. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Peace out. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys have an awesome time. See you at the state of play if you want to watch the stream with me.